Wally Shawn reads from his essays and discusses human nature with a communist. Sarah Taylor, and I will be your host and moderator for this evening. Please join me in welcoming Wally Shawn. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, can you hear me? Because I can't tell. <laughs> and I've marched in the streets to demonstrate for peace and I don't make it a practice to wink or joke about the brutal actions of brutal men, I can't deny that in spite of myself, I derive some sense of superiority from being a citizen of a country that can act brutally with impunity and can't be stopped. <clears throat> I feel quite different from the way I know I would feel if I were a citizen of Grenada. Mauritius or the Tongan Islands. My feeling of superiority and the sense of well-being that comes from that increases with the number of poor people on the planet whose lives are dominated by me or my proxies and whom I nonetheless can completely ignore. That for the first time in human history there's the potential Actually, really, the actuality of being able to feed and clothe and house everybody on the planet except for one barrier, which is that nothing gets produced in this planet unless some capitalist or group of capitalists can make a profit for it. That's what stands between the people on food stamps, let alone the person in Somalia or some other part of the planet, from being able to eat. And so this is something in terms of why um, we, uh, or why I'm coming from, that we need a revolution to change this. It doesn't have to be this way. There was a time in human history when it did. There wasn't enough abundance. There wasn't enough technology for that. But that's no longer the case, except for this one barrier. But I think we should talk about human nature. And I think there are two things that I guess I would say about that do have to do with something that makes us partic particularly human, uh, different than any other species. One is that we have the ability to understand the world. And clearly from that essay, through, through art, I mean clearly a, a work of, of art such as this essay and certainly the plays, you can come away with a whole different understanding of reality. We also can also understand it in terms of talking and analysis and political theory and history, these are all ways that we are unique as a species in being able to understand the world that we live in. And another thing that's particularly unique about our species and our nature is that we have the ability to transform our nature and to transform the world. We can act on it. And clearly our human nature has changed over the uh, tens of thousands of years that there's been civilization and, and while there's gradual changes that happen, there's also changes that happen in big leaps when whole ways that people look at the world suddenly change and, and exist in a, in a new way. And uh, this is why Marx actually said that the whole history, that all of human history is nothing but the continuous transformation of human nature. So I think these are some things we can get we can get into. I would like to talk about this quest for superiority and what is it? Where does it come from? Who, you know, who feels this? And, and why do they feel this? And how can we change it? And also, uh, you say that imperial dreams aren't the only dreams we have. And I think that's also true. And so I think we should spend some time too sort of exploring, well, how do we have those imperial dreams more characterize who we are than these need to look down on each other. Obviously, uh, we would, uh, we'd like, we'd like it to be, uh, We'd like the situation to change so that everybody 
who was, uh, didn't have any food, could go into Whole Foods and uh, take what he needed. And uh, yet the guy who owns it uh, feels that uh, he has to set the rule that uh, without payment, uh, people aren't allowed to take the food. Now, I don't, uh, I'm not really an expert, to put it mildly, on uh, primitive societies, but uh, certainly there are, uh, there have been, there seem to be uh, groups of people, uh, even in my own experience, and it's probably more true in primitive societies that people can uh, share and can uh, cooperate and, and find it appropriate. Even a group of actors putting on a play uh, instinctively share food if it's lunchtime and some people don't have they didn't bring any lunch. Uh, it's, um, it, it's, it's just uh, absolutely inevitable that the one who has brought his little container of rice and beans is going to give half of that to the next guy.